Welcome to Unreal Engine 4 Custom Static Mesh Formula, the complete step-by-step -step pipeline to exporting and importing custom static meshes from Maya LT or Maya into Unreal Engine 4 for game environments. In this video, I will show you what is covered in this tutorial series and what you will learn. For this entire series, we'll be using Unreal Engine version 4.14, but any previous versions of Unreal will also work and we will be using Maya LT 2017 prior to update 3, but previous versions of Maya LT will also work. And this entire series will also work with regular version of Maya, with the exception of one video, and that's baking normal maps. In Maya LT we'll use Turtle Baker, but in Maya you'll have to use transfer maps. But no matter what version of Maya LT, Maya, or Unreal Engine 4 you're using, you will be able to follow this entire tutorial series. Software may change, but the principles remain the same. So in the first module, we will cover in detail the foundational principles for properly exporting and importing static meshes. And we'll start by setting up project folders for Maya LT, Unreal Engine 4, and our working project. This will help to keep all of our files organized for each software and for the entire project. We will then briefly go over example project files, where to place them, and how to view them. We'll then set up the interface for Maya LT and Unreal Engine 4 for custom static mesh work. We will also set up the grid in Maya and Unreal Engine 4 to match each other. This means that everything we create in Maya LT will match in scale and dimensions when we import into Unreal Engine 4. This is a very important step to make sure that static meshes are identical in size between two software. We will then set up our initial scenes and character reference scale in Maya LT and Unreal Engine 4 to make sure that everything we create is proportionally correct to a playable character in game. We will go over export and options in Maya LT or Maya and important options in Unreal Engine 4. We'll cover which options you need to enable and disable to properly export and import static meshes. And we'll be using these options for the rest of the tutorial series. We will cover the importance of pivot points and how pivot points in Maya translate to pivot points in Unreal Engine 4. You will learn how to modify them and how to control them so the pivot point matches between Maya LT and Unreal Engine 4. We'll then begin to create simple static mesh, a modular wall, so we can put the rest of the foundational principles into some context. We'll start off by creating a low poly mesh, which will eventually become our final game ready static mesh. We'll then create a high poly mesh, which we'll use to bake normal maps from. We will UV a low poly mesh, and set up our initial Unreal Engine 4 material. We will cover hard and soft edges, also known as smoothing groups, and how this translates from Maya LT or Maya into Unreal Engine 4. This is a very important concept, and it will determine how your edges look inside Unreal Engine 4. So we'll go over some of the principles and different examples. We will then bake normal maps in Maya LT using our high poly mesh and bake that detail into our low poly mesh by generating a normal map. We'll cover exporting and importing normal map texture and using it as part of our material. We will go over flipping the green channel to make sure our normal map is displayed correctly and we'll set up a Photoshop file so we can begin working on our texture. We will also cover light maps which are very important for static meshes. Light map is a texture that stores light and shadow information on your static meshes. So after building lights, your static meshes receive and cast light and shadow correctly. And to make that work, you need a separate UV channel that is properly UV'd specifically for light maps. So we'll cover two different ways. First, is entirely done inside Unreal Engine 4. And second, we'll use Maya LT to create our own UV light map channel and we'll cover all the options we need to make sure that our static mesh contains proper light maps. We will then 
cover how to create collisions. First, we'll focus how to create collisions entirely inside Unreal Engine 4 using Static Mesh Editor. And then we'll jump over to Maya LT and create custom collisions to be exported along with our Static Mesh. We'll cover different variety of collisions you can use from very simple to complex. And then for the last part of the first module, we'll create three different types of textures. We'll create an albedo texture, which is also known as a type of a diffuse texture, but one that doesn't contain any lighting or shadow baked into the texture. So essentially, albedo texture is PBR or physically based rendering correct diffuse texture that contains no light or shadow information, contains no ambient occlusion, and it is a pure neutral base color of the object. We'll then create a detail normal map. We'll cover two different methods. One is using NVIDIA normal map filter for Photoshop and two using Quixel Zendu. We'll then take our detail normal and combine it with our base normal, the one we generated when we baked our high poly down to low poly. This way we'll have one single normal map with low frequency and high frequency detail as part of one texture. And last, we'll create a roughness map, which controls how shiny or how rough object surface is. And a roughness map is essential of making your static mesh look real. So this first module is extremely important because we cover all the foundational principles you need to know so you can apply it to your own work. In the second module, we'll go through this process again, but at a much faster rate. We will use all the principles we learned in the first module and apply them in the second module by creating an object that contains a bit more geometry. And by going through this pipeline again with a different object will help you to integrate all of the principles into your workflow. We'll start by briefly going over the planning and the pre-production process. We'll talk about the idea, collecting the reference, doing research, and creating a production list. This is something you should go through prior to creating any static mesh for any game engine. We'll then jump right in to create our low poly mesh. Then we'll create our high poly mesh so we can bake normal maps from our high poly down to low poly. We'll UV our low poly for texturing and set up our initial Unreal Engine 4 material. We'll define hard and soft edges and then bake our normal maps. We'll then create custom light maps by defining a second UV channel and unwrapping this object specifically for light maps. We'll create custom collisions and spend time on creating three different textures. An albedo map, detail normal map using both Photoshop normal map filter and Quixel Zendu. We'll then combine our base normal with our detail normal into a single texture and create a roughness map, which will define how shiny or how rough our object surface is. So by the end of the second module, you will be ready to export and import your own static meshes from Maya LT or Maya into Unreal Engine 4. So let's go ahead and get started.